right, buckle up, friends, because it's going to be a little bit of a long one. And bear with me as I used to just cry if I had to read anything out loud. And I'm sure some of my high school friends could um, be a witness to this as they one friend that I didn't even think she liked me that much actually took over reading for me because I was in tears and embarrassed. So just know that when I read out loud, I am facing one of my big fears. And do I mess up all the time? Yes. Do I read things backwards? Yes. <laughs> even if I like think, oh yeah, this is what it's supposed to say. And like, I know this, but like my mouth is like, I'm just going to say whatever I want. So just know, like, I know I'm not good at this and I'll probably mess things up or like say things differently every time I read it because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I just want to help <laughs> the lay person as myself, like, you know, the regular average Joes and the average Jills of the world that might not realize you can look into this stuff on your own. What do we want to look up and look into today? The house bills um, in Michigan. So um, Michigan, Lansing, Michigan has the state capitol and all these, you know, like political people in charge of stuff that are going to try to help us change some things and help with the statute of limitations. So that's the bill I'm going to be focusing on and what I want to read to you because not everybody has the time to just like dig into this um, <clears throat> themselves. So I figured, hey, I'll just make a quick video of reading the house bills and what do they actually say? Because what uh, somebody might give like a brief, you know, lowdown on it and maybe it's not going to tell you everything. So you're allowed to just go read the bill yourself and see if you like what it says. And then if you do, you can say, hey, I support you and like, I want to vote yes for this um, or whatever. Like, I don't like we aren't actually voting on this. It's like the political people, the people in charge, the representatives. <laughs> I think it's the representatives, the next thing that they're going to do, like they just passed it on the, um, it was called like the Criminal Justice Committee, just voted yes on these bills um, to pass them and all the amendments that go with it. Basically like a package of papers and bills and rules and laws about the statute of limitations. <clears throat> they passed that level. Now they have to go to what is called, let me peek, so the first one was the Criminal Justice Committee. And then the next one is going to be what's called the house floor. So now it's going to the house for the next thing. Okay. Okay. So what am I going to be reading? Bill number, house bill number 4482 through 4487. We'll see if I can get through them all in like in a reasonable amount of time. And you can Google this yourself. Um, you literally could just put in the numbers in Google and it should come right up. And then the actual website is the Michigan Legislature or Legislator. I don't know how you want me to pronounce that, but it's just however it comes to me, that's how I'm going to say it, okay? <laughs> um, so anyways, on this website, it's got like the dome of the state capitol in the corner. So you know where it's, where it's at, where it's come from, what, what I'm reading. Um, so you click on what says House Introduced Bill, la-di-da comes up with a PDF that is easy to read for some people. Um, <laughs> okay, so it has April 27th, 2023, introduced by Representative Brixey, which I've talked about, and then it lists a ton of other representatives um, and referred to the Committee on Criminal Justice. I'm gonna skip reading all those names because this is gonna be long and it's kind of like reading the King James Version of the Bible, but like in law you know, and all those law kind of words and a lot of numbers. So basically this first bill is going to have the words. It's going to have a lot of numbers. So forgive me as I try to get through them, but the numbers kind of matter because apparently they, it's basically like when you read the Bible, it'll like have the little side notes of like, Hey, this verse has something to do with this verse. And it's basically like that for all you Christians out there. Um, and all you formal ones or whatever you are in today's day and age. <laughs> If you've ever read the Bible, that's what I think of because it's complicated and you kind of have to know one section before you can know the other section. So in the bill, it references um, the amend it references what's called a section 5851B quite a bit. And then some other numbers I kept referencing and I was like, what are they talking about? And so I went back and looked up that section. And so... I'll read you this first bill and then I'll go back and I'll read that section 
so that you understand like what are they talking about it's basically like referencing like hey if you need to know about this rule go back and read this rule because that's what it has to do with and then there's amendments which means they changed the wording of this bill and so within this house bill there's sections that are completely crossed off so i won't read those because that'll be confusing because i'm guessing those were voted to be not there and in either it's already okayed and it's already like that or that's what they're all all just voting on to be cut out or added in okay <laughs> that's how i'm taking this all right so it says a bill to amend 1961 pa 236 entitled revised judicature act of 1961 by amending section 5851b mcl 600.5851b which is that thing that it's gonna like talk about and you gotta like go back and read that page before you can understand this page kind of thing um, as added by 2018 PA 183 the people of the state of Michigan enact section 5851b number one notwithstanding section 5851 and except as otherwise provided in this section or in yeah in this section an individual who is the victim of criminal sexual conduct may commence an action to recover damages sustained because of the criminal sexual conduct at any time before whichever of the following is later 10 years after the time the claim accrues which so 10 years after the time the claim accrues so i believe that means you're allowed to make a complaint 10 years after the thing happens. <clears throat> That's letter A. Letter B, the individual reaches the age of, 28 is crossed out because that's what it used to be, 52 years old because they realized, hey, the average age of people coming forward, you're actually a lot older than you know a lot of minors. Like Some minors are super brave and they actually come forward right away, but not everybody is. Not everyone has the support. Not everyone realizes like, oh, I can actually tell on this person. Most of them are way too scared. Most of them sometimes don't even realize a crime has happened. They just think it's their fault or they blame themselves. Sorry for my interjections, but just so you know, why is this bill important? What is it even talking about? The statute of limitations is basically limiting people um, to be able to make a complaint criminally or civilly um, and, and just saying like, sorry, you're too late. You're too late to make a claim even though this is going to affect the rest of your life, you have a time limit. So this is why this is important to us. So anyways, so letter A is 10 years after the time the claim accrues. And it's just, you're allowed to do it with whichever one is the latest, whichever one gives you the most amount of time, I believe is how this, what this means. And then letter B, the individual reaches the age of 52 years old. Um, and then C, seven years after the date, the individual discovers or through this exercise of reasonable diligence should have discovered both the individual's injury and the casual relationship between the injury and the criminal sexual conduct. <laughs> that one, I don't really understand that well. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Um, before, it was three years after the date of the individual discovers, you know, that big long one. It was three years. Now it's seven years. Um, I don't really understand that very well, but I think it basically means seven years after the person realizes the injury had happened, because like, let's say there were three and they didn't realize it. So then seven years after they realized, I think I'm, I'm not really 100% sure on this one. Like we need an expert. So, hey, if any lawyers or um, political people are watching this, that know what this actually means, like feel free to like tag me in a video or um, share your explanation in the comments, something like that if you wanna like break it down in layman's terms if we don't totally understand it. So I'll read that part one more time because it looks like it adds number two, number one. Okay, that seems backwards, but there's more in letter C. So I'll read it one more time, but go all the way down. Okay. So, letter C of this criminal sexual conduct rules, basically, um, the limitation rules, 
says seven years after the date the individual discovers or through the exercise of reasonable diligence should have discovered both the individual's injury and the casual relationship between the injury and the criminal sexual conduct for purposes of so this is like this is like in parentheses number two says for purposes of subsection one it is not necessary that a criminal prosecution or other proceeding have been brought as a result of the conduct or if a criminal prosecution or other proceeding was brought that the prosecution or proceeding resulted in a conviction or adjudication. Okay, <laughs> moving on. All right, and I'm sorry, I'm not good at like, have, like I don't record on my computer, so I'm really bad at like having it on the screen for you. So that's why I encourage you like, go look this up yourself because I mean, yeah, I'm a terrible reader, but um, also it's super confusing me just reading it. Um, moving on, it says parentheses number three, an action to recover damages sustained because of criminal sexual conduct may be brought at any time without limitations if there is a criminal prosecution brought as a result of the conduct that results in a conviction for criminal sexual conduct. This part is in bold, and I think that must mean that it's important. I don't know why they would bold stuff and, like, not bold stuff. I don't know if it's for the benefit of the reader. I don't know if that means, like, it's more important in the bill. Um, or that that's just like the main meat of the bill. I don't know why some is bolded and some is just regular print. I don't, I don't know the answer. So if somebody knows, put it in the comments <laughs> because I do not know. Number four in parentheses used to be number three, but that got amended. So maybe number three is or number four might be like the new a new section. I don't know, but there's a lot crossed off and changed and added and stuff like that in this section. Um, so I won't read the parts that are crossed off. You can go peek at them of what he used to say. <clears throat> Number four, regardless of any period of limitation under subsection one or section 5851, remember that thing they kept referencing? The claim of an individual who was the victim of criminal sexual conduct before the effective date of the 2023 Amendatory Act that amended this section is revived and the individual may commence an action to recover damages sustained because of the criminal sexual conduct before two years after the effective date of the 2023 amendatory act that amended this action okay all right i won't bother reading the stuff that's crossed off but I do encourage you to go peek at it because then you can see like the progress of this bill and the things that have changed over the years. I think what this two year thing was talking about is for the people that um, didn't have this rule before and they had all these limitations. I think they're opening up a window for the past for past people that couldn't make a claim. I could be wrong, but that's why it's important to read all of this and like do your best to understand. And I wish I had an interpreter. So if someone else wants to make a video and interpret this for me, that would be great. Um, yeah. So anyways, it crossed off a bunch of stuff, A, B, and C, and all this stuff was crossed off. And then it jumps to number five, which used to be four. It says this section does not limit an individual's right to bring an action under section 5851. Number six, as used in this section, Oh, okay. I was like, that's it. So number six, as used in this section, letter A, adjudication means an adjudication of one or more offenses under chapter something numbers of the probate code of 1939, 1939PA, 2A8, MCL 712A.1, 2712A.32. Letter B, criminal sexual conduct means conduct prohibited under section 520B, 520C, 520D, 520E, or 520G of the Michigan Penal Code. 1931 PA 328 MCL 750.52B. Five or seven five zero dot five two C seven five zero dot five two D seven five zero dot five two E and seven five zero dot 
five, two, zero, D. Wow. This is why they have to go to school. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if your representatives have to go to school for any of this. I don't know how that, like, I don't, I don't know how that works. What do you, what are your qualifications for these things? And like, wow, to have to read all this, but basically reading the Bible as you, a young child, like, this is what it reminds me of. Like, they're, they're having a bill written out. And then they have to reference all those other verses, which are the penal codes and the sections. They have to reference those because like a law has already been written in such a way. And then they have to reference like, okay, this is amending this part of the law or the bill. And then to know what law they're talking about or referencing, you go back to those page numbers and say like, oh, okay, so they're talking about X, Y, Z and it's all like married together <laughs> so if they were like well in amendment number five two three five it talks about section blah da 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 and then you could basically build up that and see what all the rules are so anyway sorry that was really long um in acting so the next section after i read all those penal codes in acting section one this amendatory act does not take effect unless all of the following bills of the 102nd legislature are enacted into law that's probably pretty important it says letter a senate bill number or house bill number 4484 request number big long number oh i think that's the date um when this was like put into place this bill, like when it was brought to the table, was April 28th, 2023. And then letter B, uh, Senate bill number or House bill number 4483, request number, and then that looks like, but I don't know what those numbers mean, but it looks like another date, maybe something, but it, it looks funny. So anyways, that's the final page of the bill number 4482 and now for house bill number 4483 i'll skip a bunch of stuff at the beginning like i said please feel free to look this up yourself but for those that don't feel like it i'm just gonna read it to you and so you know what's on it <laughs> um because to me it's kind of exciting to like oh you actually get to look this stuff up and you're not just like blindly voting for stuff you can actually look it up and see what it is that they want support for okay so a bill to amend 1961 PA 236 entitled Revised Judicature Act of 1961 by amending section 5805 um, MCL 600.5805 as amended by uh, 2018 PA 138. Oh, I forgot. I was going to show you what is that 581 blah blah. Like what, they keep referencing a section. So I'll let you know what that is because these bills are basically built off of this section of rules, per, like let's say, the, the section of rules that they keep having to reference is because this bill is basically trying to reword some stuff and change some things about that original document, let's say. So one second. Okay, so in the bills, they keep referencing these sections and I don't know if I have all the numbers that they're referencing in this one page, but just to give you an example, you would click out of the house bill page and go to the section six zero, those long numbers, six zero zero dot five eight one B. That was one that they kept referencing. So you could go back, like click out of the bill and then go back and look that number up. Cause it says revised judicature act of 1961, which is what they reference in the beginning of that bill. Um, it says court action by minor victim of criminal sexual conduct exception to period of limitations right to bring action under mcl 6001 or 600.5851 adjudication and criminal sexual conduct defined section 5851b number one notwithstanding sections 5805 and 5851 an individual who, while a minor, is the victim of criminal sexual conduct may commence an action to recover damages sustained because of the criminal sexual conduct at any time before whichever of the following is later. The individual reaches the age of 28 years old, three years after the date of the individual discovers, or through the exercise of reasonable diligence, should have discovered both the individual's injury 
and the casual relationship between the injury and the criminal sexual conduct. For purposes of subsection 1, it is not necessary that a criminal prosecution or other proceeding have been brought as a result of the conduct or if a criminal prosecution or other proceeding was brought that the prosecution or proceeding resulted in a conviction or adjudication, regardless of any period of limitation under subsection 1 or sections 5805 or 5851, the individual who, while a minor, was the victim of criminal sexual conduct after December 31st, 1996, but before two years before the effective date of the Amendatory Act that added this section may commence an action to recover damages sustained because of the criminal sexual conduct within 90 days after the effective date of the Mandatory Act and that added this section. If the person alleged to have committed the criminal sexual conduct was convicted of criminal sexual conduct against any person under Section 520B of the Michigan Penal Code. Unless a bunch of codes, I'll skip that. And the defendant admit, admitted either the following, that the defendant was in a position of authority over the victim as the victim's phys physician and used the authority to coerce the victim and to submit, and to submit or convict uh, the victim to submit, that the defendant engaged in purported medical treatment or examination of the victim in a manner that is or for purposes that are medically recognized as unethical or unacceptable. This section does not limit an individual's right to bring the, an action under section 5851 as used in this section. Adjudication means that the term as defined in section 5805, criminal sexual conduct, means that, the, means that term as defined in section 5805. Okay, so it's <laughs> It's really crazy because I just had to go back to reference what 5851 was. And then within the 5851, you also have to reference 5805. So now it's like, I got to find 5805. So this can be quite a job <laughs> because now I want to know, well, what is 5? Okay. So the thing I just read was a shorter, unamended section of the bill 4482 because it was very similar but you could tell when you're actually reading the bill those are all the things that are crossed off the words are changed and it is what um the representative julie briggsy and her team and you know i'm sure other representatives also are are pushing for so that it can make it easier for victims of sexual abuse to come forward and not have such a limitation that's basically the gist. <laughs> um, but this 505, uh, like, it's, it's kind of difficult. So, okay. Um, this is why lawyers make so much money, I swear. But, um, like, this knowing laws and bills and everything, I, I mean, this is just, like, so much reading. So, I just looked up, like, what is the section 5805, and it's another really long thing that, like, it's basically like one of the original documents of these rules and then the bills that we are trying to pass you go back and reference this as like the original thing is how I'm understanding it I don't think I'll read this whole thing because it sounds very much like what I already just read it's probably got some changes here and there and I think this one looks much longer so I'll just go back to like the bills that we're trying to get passed to see if we like this because I think those are already done. They're already in the system. They are what they are. And then these are the changed ones, like the updated ones that we're trying to pass. So just so you can hear what they are. All right. So this one is 4483. Um, okay. So it says the people of the state of Michigan enact section 5805 which you can go read that one yourself if you'd like. A person shall not bring or maintain an action to recover damages. Okay, just want to make sure I push, push play. Um, for injuries to persons or property unless after the claim first accrued to the plaintiff or to someone through whom the plaintiff claims. The action is commenced within 
the periods of time prescribed by this section, except as otherwise provided in this section, the period of limitations is three years after the time of the death or injury for all actions to recover damages for the death of a person or for injury to a person or property. Uh, number three, section or subject to subsections four and to six. The period of limitations is two years for an action charging assault, battery, or false imprisonment. Hmm. Two years for that? Oh. Subject to subsection 6, the period of limitations is five years for an action charging assault or battery brought by a person who has been assaulted or battered by the person's spouse or former spouse, an individual with whom the person has a child in common or a person with whom the person who has been assaulted or battered resides or formally resided. Number five, subject to subsection. Six, the period of limitations is five years for an action charging assault and battery brought by a person who has been assaulted or battered by an individual with whom the person has or has had a dating relationship. The period of limitations is for an action to recover damages sustained because of a criminal sexual conduct is as provided in section 581, no, 5851B. <laughs> so you'd have to go back to reference that. And then a whole paragraph is cut out or like a line through it, so I won't bother reading that. Seven, the period of limitations is two years for an action charging malicious prosecution. I don't know what that means. Except as otherwise provided, so this is number eight, except as otherwise provided in this chapter, the period of limitations is two years for an action charging malpractice. This is what's kind of confusing and I wish someone could explain it like, okay, how come in the 8842 bill, it the, the limitations was like much better, but then for this criminal stuff seems like it's not as good. Like two years is not a lot of time. So like, this says, except other, as otherwise provided in this chapter, the period of limitations is two years for an action charging malpractice. Like, okay, I'm sorry, but if you're malpracticing, I feel like it's probably going to take more than two years. Um, but I don't know. The period of limitations is two years for an action against a sheriff charging misconduct or neglect of office by the sheriff or the sheriff's deputies. Number 10, the period of limitations is two years after the expiration of of the year for which a constable was elected for actions based on the constable's negligence or misconduct as constable, whatever that means. Um, 11, the period of limitations is one year for an action charging liable or slander. Uh, two, number 12, the period of limitations is three years for a product's liability action. However, in for a, however, in for a product that has been in use for not less than 10 years, the plaintiff is providing a prima facie case must do so with the benefit, without the benefit of any presumption. Number three, an action against a state licensed architect or professional enge engineer or licensed professional surveyor arising from professional services rendered is an action charging malpractice subject to the period of lim limitation contained in section eight. <sighs> 14, the periods of limitation under this section are subject to any applicable period of repose established in section 5838A. That's one we haven't referenced yet. 5838B or 5839. Number 15, the amendments to this section made by 2011 PA 162 apply to causes of action that accrue on or after January 2012. Number 16, as used in this section, they crossed off a ton of stuff. Uh, they crossed off the whole section of A, made a new A, crossed off B, says criminal sexual conduct means, crossed off a bunch of stuff, that term as defined in section 5851B, which I believe is the one we did read. Um, but if you haven't, you'd go back and say like, okay, so criminal sexual conduct is referenced in this verse, if you will, and you go back and read that verse and then it'll tell you what it means <laughs> instead of them repeating a bunch of stuff over and over again, which makes sense. 
um, letter B, dating relationship means frequent in intimate associations primarily characterized by the expectation of affectional involvement. Dating relationship does not include a casual relationship or an ordinary fraternization between two individuals in a business or social context. In Acting Section 1, this amendatory act does not take effect unless all of the following bills of the 102nd legislature are enacted into law. Senate Bill number or House Bill number 4484, um, request number on that date, Senate Bill um, number or House Bill 4482. That's the final page of that one. <laughs>